Uh, today we're going to look at Psalm 144, uh, just a great psalm. But I woke up this morning with um, with the Randy Travis song on my mind, on my heart. It's not what you think. Uh, it's from his hymns album, and I just love this hymn. It's Blessed Assurance. And so we're going to start this morning just by singing together Blessed Assurance and where you are. I hope you'll sing along with me. Just rich words. Aren't you glad that you are assured uh, of a hope of eternity, that nothing will snatch you out of the hands of the Father? You are His uh, for all of eternity. We call that the perseverance of the saints, that those who are truly born again will persevere to the very end. And, of course, our assurance of that is what Jesus has done for us. And so let's praise Him this morning as we sing this old hymn, Blessed Assurance. we are. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. of rapture now burst in my sight angels descending ring from above echoes of mercies whispers of love this is my story this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day Let's do what that last stanza says, that all day long we praise the Lord. Uh, whatever it is we do, as Paul said in Colossians, whether you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, anything you do this morning or today, let it be an act of worship to God, praising Him in, in all the goodness and the grace and the mercies that He has given to us. So praise Him, whatever it is you do today. Psalm 144 is a psalm of David, and we're not quite sure when he wrote it. Uh, but he is uh, he's praising the Lord, and he's recognizing that God alone is his rock, and God alone is his salvation. 
He's praying that God would subdue his enemies, those who come against him. Um, but at the same time, he's praising him in the midst of that. So he begins in verse 1 by saying, Praise be the Lord, my rock. Um, he is our rock. He's our foundation. He is the one that we build our lives on. Uh, Jesus encouraged us to build our lives on a sure foundation, and that is him and the word of God. So David's praising God because he is his rock, and he trains his hands. He trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Now, David was talking about a literal warfare here, uh, a war against his enemies, men, but we know that we have one adversary, uh, that is Satan himself and his demons. And um, that training our hands for war, Paul reminds us in Ephesians that, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Um, people are not your enemy, but behind those people that may uh, appear to be your enemy, behind them are spiritual dark forces. And he tells us to put on the armor of God in this warfare, this battle that rages in the heavenlies. And it's a spiritual warfare. Uh, we're reminded that he gives us two offensive weapons in this warfare, the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And so when we're in this battle, this spiritual battle, uh, the thing that is, that is most assured to us is the Word of God. And we can stand on that and we can hold on to the promises, the blessings, the precepts as we're obedient to the Word of God that that's where the real great, the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God, as we walk in the Spirit with His Word. And so I encourage you today, put on the full armor of God, uh, but recognize that that your, your weapons of warfare are the Holy Spirit, that we walk in the Spirit of God and we hold to His Word. This is His Word, His infallible, inspired Word. It has not changed. It will not change. Um, we can bank on it. We can rest on it. It is the Word of God. And so he is, he is my loving God and my fortress. Aren't you glad that God's your loving God? That he loves you with a love that will never end, that will never wane, that will never uh, fluctuate from one degree to the next, that he loves you unconditionally. He is our loving God and my fortress my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. And God is your security. The federal government's not your security. The Internal Revenue Service or the National Reserve is not your security. Your 401k is not your security. Uh, your security, your hope rests in God and God alone. Oh, Lord, this is a change of thought. I, I think David, when he's reflecting on God and his, his, the magnitude of God in these opening verses, he pauses and he reflects on himself and he reflects on all of mankind. And it's a question we need to reflect on. He says, oh, Lord, what is man that you care for him? Some translations say, what is man that you're mindful of him? In, in comparison to your greatness, O oh God, in comparison to your splendor and your wonder and, and the fallibility of man, God, what are we that you even care for us? The son of man that you think of him. Man is like a breath and his days like a fleeting shadow. Uh, today, take a moment to say, God, I know me. I know I'm a bonehead. I, I love you, but I know you're a bonehead too. Um, and, and what, that God would even consider us. Praise him this morning that even in all of your fault, even in, in all of your misgivings, even in all of your blunders, that God's grace is so, so incredibly abounding that he cares for you. Worship him, respond to him with an attitude of worship in your heart. Part your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemies. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high and deliver me and rescue me from, my, from the mighty warriors, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose, uh, whose right hands are deceitful. So here David now is, is calling on God 
God, I know you're in the heavens, but God, would you be eminent? God, would you stoop down? Would you rout the enemies that have come against me, the foreigners? We have to understand, uh, and don't mis misapply this verse, he's not talking uh, just about a foreigner in the land. He tells us to care for the foreigner uh, in his word. But he's talking about those who are coming from foreign godless nations who are coming against the nation of Israel. And he's asking God to rout them. And then in verse 9, in response to the prayer that he knows God is going to answer. Did you get that? In response to the prayer that he knows God is going to answer. God hasn't answered it yet, but he's trusting and he's holding on by faith that God is going to destroy his enemies. And in verse 9, in response of that, while they're still coming against him, I will sing a new song to you, O God. On the ten-string lyre, I will make music to you. To the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David, from the deadly sword. And so the application for you and for me is that while we're trusting and believing in God to answer, we'll go ahead and give him thanks, as Paul says in Philippians, that, there, that we're to give thanks uh, even for those things that have not yet to come, past, to come to pass. He says in verse 11, Deliver me and rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons in their youth be, will, will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled in every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by ten thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of the walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets." So here he's looking forward to what uh, what will be the uh, the response what will be the the outcome of God's answering that prayer. There's a principle here for us um, that it's true when God redeems when God redeems a situation, he he not only just makes it better, but God is able to to do abundantly more than what we could ever ask or imagine. I can't help but think back in those distressful years that we went through in our life, that when I look at life now, when I look at God's provision, when I look at God's care, oh my goodness, not only has he redeemed and delivered, but God has blessed abundantly. Oh my goodness, God is good. Um, he concludes in the Psalm in verse 15 by saying, blessed are the people of whom this is true. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. You know what he's saying there? He's saying this morning that you're blessed if you're in him. You are blessed. You're blessed by him. Um, you have his blessings on your life. You have his blessings in your family. Uh, praise him this morning for his blessings in your life. And let's worship him in this closing song. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty words, blessed be the Lord.
Father, we worship you today, God. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you that, that, God, you reign and you will reign forevermore. God, you reign over every situation that we are facing in our lives, God. You are reigning over every instance in our nation and the nations, God. Father, we pray that you as your people would be faithful, God, to not only walk with you, God, but to worship you, God. And Lord, to be a witness, God, that today you would give each one of us some opportunity, Lord, just to bless someone, Lord, with a, either an act of kindness or, God, a word of encouragement. And God, we pray that you give us opportunity to share Christ with somebody today, Lord, who does not know you. Lord, we love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you. I ask uh, that... Um, you continue to pray for me and the body here, uh, our staff. Um, look forward to seeing you this weekend if you are comfortable of coming to worship in corporate worship presently. Um, and don't feel ashamed if, if you are concerned about COVID. Uh, you stay at home and you watch online and you worship online with us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And I do want to encourage everybody uh, to remember the social distancing and sanctuary uh, come in with your mask. Uh, be considerate of other people. Uh, you can take those off when you're seated at a social distance, but uh, but just encourage you to abide by those things, not for your sake necessarily, but for the sake of others. And uh, Paul said to consider others better than yourselves, and so let's do that. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you that he keep you. Have a great day and weekend.